In order to analyze the health of an economy or examine economic growth, it's necessary to have a way to measure the size of an economy. Economists usually measure the size of an economy by the amount of stuff it produces. This makes sense in a lot of ways, mainly because an economy's output in a given period of time is equal to the economy's income, and the economy's level of income is one of the main determinants of its standard of living and its societal welfare. It may seem strange that output, income, and expenditure on domestic goods in an economy are all the same quantity, but this observation is simply the result of the fact that there is both a buying and a selling side to every economic transaction. For example, if an individual bakes a loaf of bread and sells it for $3, he's created $3 of output and made $3 in income. Similarly, the buyer of the loaf of bread spent $3, which counts in the expenditure column. The equivalence between overall output, income, and expenditure is simply a result of this principle aggregated over all the goods and services in an economy. Economists measure these quantities using the concept of gross domestic product. Gross domestic product, commonly referred to as GDP, is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given period of time. It's important to understand precisely what this means, so it's worth giving some thought to each of the definition's components. It's pretty easy to see that it doesn't make sense to count, say, an orange the same in GDP as a television, nor does it make sense to count the television the same as a car. The GDP calculation accounts for this by adding up the market value of each good or service rather than adding up the quantities of the goods and services directly. Although adding up market value solves an important problem, it can also create other calculation problems. One problem arises when prices change over time. Since the basic GDP measure doesn't make it clear whether changes are due to actual changes in output or just changes in prices. The concept of real GDP is an attempt to account for this, however. Other problems can arise when new goods enter the market or when technology developments make goods both higher quality and less expensive. In order to have a market value for a good or service, that good or service has to be bought and sold in a legitimate market. Therefore, only goods and services that are bought and sold in markets count in GDP, even though there may be a lot of other work being done and output being created. For example, goods and services produced and consumed within a household don't count in GDP, even though they would count if the goods and services were brought to the marketplace. In addition, goods and services transacted in illegal or otherwise illegitimate markets don't count in GDP. There are many steps that go into the production of virtually any good or service. Even with an item as simple as a $3 loaf of bread, for example, the price of the wheat used for the bread is perhaps 10 cents, the wholesale price of the bread is maybe $1.50, and so on. Since all of these steps were used to create something that was sold to the consumer for $3, there would be a lot of double counting if the prices of all of the intermediate goods were added into GDP. Therefore, goods and services are only added into GDP when they've reached their final point of sale, whether that point is a business or a consumer. An alternate method of calculating GDP is to add up the value added at each stage of the production process. In our very simplified bread example here, you'll notice that we said that the price of the output of the wheat used to make the bread was 10 cents. And let's just assume for simplicity that the cost of the wheat input was zero. In that case, the value added for the wheat grower would just be 10 cents minus zero, or 10 cents. Let's now assume that the wheat is the only input into the production process for the baker who's selling his bread wholesale. In that case, let's say he sells his output for $1.50, and then his cost of input was just the price of the output of the wheat grower, in which case his value add is $1.40, which is just $1.50 minus 10 cents. At the last stage, we have the bread retailer who is selling the bread that he got wholesale to the end consumer. We can see that the price of his output, let's say, is $3. Well, the cost of his input is $1.50, because that was the wholesale price that he paid for the bread. So then his value add is just the price of his output minus the cost of his input, or $1.50.
So you'll notice that if we add up all the value adds at each stage of the production process, we get a total of $3, which is in fact equal to the price of the final output. That shouldn't be terribly surprising to you. It should also become more clear that if we were to just add up the price of the output at each stage, we would be overcounting, and we'd be counting $4.60 in GDP for an item that ultimately was only priced at $3. So this is the double counting that we were talking about earlier. Notice that we could also get the total value add from just adding up the prices of the output and then subtracting off the sum of the cost of the input. Because if we were to take the $4.60 here, subtract off $1.60, we would again get $3. Regardless how we think about it, the appropriate figure to use for this loaf of bread's contribution to GDP is in fact $3. GDP counts the value of goods and services at the time they're produced, not necessarily when they're officially sold or resold. This has two implications. First, the value of used goods that are resold doesn't count in GDP, though a value-added service associated with reselling the good would be counted in GDP. Second, goods that are produced but not sold are viewed as being purchased by the producer's inventory, and thus counted in GDP when they're produced. The most notable recent change in measuring an economy's income is the switch from using gross national product to using gross domestic product. In contrast to gross national product, which counts the output of all of an economy's citizens, gross domestic product counts all output that's created within the borders of the economy regardless of who produced it. Gross domestic product is defined over a specific period of time, whether it be a month, a quarter, or a year. It's important to keep in mind that while the level of income is certainly important to the health of an economy, it's not the only thing that matters. Wealth and assets, for example, also have a significant effect on standard of living, since people not only buy new goods and services, but also get enjoyment from using the goods that they already own.